Okay, now for a quick update on where we're at on this project. Okay, my bedding turned out pretty good, and um, I did go ahead and sand that pressure point down that I was talking about. And went to the range and tried a few rounds while I ran into some technical difficulties. I did get three three-shot groups. And I'm pretty much where I've always been with this gun. Um, this was my last group right here. And that's not bad. That's under an inch and a half. So with what, where we're at in this stage, I'm not complaining. And I do expect to get it down a lot more than that. But for now, that's, I'm pretty happy with that. Not to mention it was me behind the trigger and that was, I filmed me shooting, but again, ran into technical difficulties. If I get it to where it looks halfway decent, I might post that sometime, but um, it was interesting to see myself shooting and to see some little issues I, I was having. Um, my bench wasn't very stable. Well, hey, it felt stable to me, but I could see a lot of movement there on the camera. Um, so anyway, just, again, I'm working on technique and stuff too, so I'm, I'm right pleased with where I'm at. Um, when I was, I did knock this down before. Was, all I did was took a 5 8 inch wooden dial and just cut it down and wrap a little sandpaper around it. It's 80 grit, all-purpose sandpaper. And I, I sealed up, get this in here, I don't know if you'll be able to, if it'll focus or not, but anyway, right through here, um, I sealed it up. Well, I still didn't have very much clearance. And also, the little part I was talking about, I wasn't sure about how to deal with on it not being symmetrical on the bedding, I went ahead and knocked that down with the Dremel. It was bothering me. I couldn't stand it. Okay, so anyway, after I, or while I was shooting, I, I knew the clearance on floating the barrel was really tight. I could get a dollar bill through there folded, no problem. But I couldn't get a business card through there. And then after I fired a couple of shots, barrel got a little warm, I checked it again with a dollar bill and it wouldn't clear. So, you know, I'm not sure how much that factored in along with everything else. But what I did do was went ahead and just knocked this down a little bit more with sandpaper. Um, and I, I've got it down pretty good right now, so I'm going to put a little men wax on this and just seal it back up and put the action back on and put it back together and try it again. Um, one thing I did want to throw out there is I, I cleaned everything up really well on the action before I put it all back together and shot it. And um, with the front action screw, when I ran the screw up, it pushed out my plumber's putty and the JB Weld. And you know, I, I was expecting that, it wasn't a surprise. Um, it was right where I thought it'd be, it came right out. But I just wanted to throw that out there in case any, any of y'all try this and haven't. Make sure you get that out. Make sure you clean everything up really well. Make sure, you know, it's functioning like it should. Um, I had to take my trigger assembly off to do this, and um, I don't like fooling with triggers. I mean, there's just a lot that can go wrong there. I put it back together, it's functioning and all that good stuff. But again, there's, there's a lot it can become a safety hazard quick. So just throwing that out there, make make sure you're really careful on what you're doing 
if you start fooling with the trigger, make sure you clean everything up really, really well. You go over everything and triple check it. So all I'm gonna do right now is take a little bit of mineral spirits here. And anytime you're sanding on wood, you're, you're gonna want, want to keep some mineral spirits around. And when you get through sanding, just wipe whatever down with it. Oh, that's some pretty walnut under there. It's almost a shame to have that, that walnut hidden. See, anyway, just matter of fact, while I'm here, might as well wipe the whole thing down. mineral spirits will dry right out. I think we're going to be in great shape here. Something else I noticed too while I was really going over everything, cleaning everything, I got a couple of spots of JB Weld on different places on my gun. A little spot on my stock here. and I mean, it's, it's barely visible, but I, I can see it. No, I'm a little spot under the trigger guard, uh, another little spot on the barrel. And, you know, it might wear off one day, but, you know, it's probably going to be there for a really long time. Just when you're doing this, just remember anywhere you, you don't think you're going to get, you know, your bedding compound, you might. I mean, I wasn't expecting it in those places and what had happened, I'd got a little bit on my hand and everywhere I touched, you know, I had just a little bit. I didn't see it until after it had hardened. I went and came and cleaned the gun up a little bit. I didn't film it, but about three or four hours after, and I mentioned this in the video, but about three or four hours after I set everything up, I came back and broke the action screws loose just a little bit. and. Um, did a little clean up around the, the edges where it came out. If I'd have saw those little spots in, I could have, you know, got them off no problem. Never would have been an issue, but I didn't. So it's, it's not going to hurt anything. And you got to look really close to see them. And I've already had a few nicks and scratches on here from hunting. And it's going to be a hunting rifle. So, you know, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. But you, anything you do, you want to do the best you can. And, you know, so I'm just throwing that out there for any of y'all. Just be really careful and go over everything while you can. And I wish I'd wore rubber gloves on that. Um, because then that would, you know, as soon as I finished bedding it, I could have taken the gloves off. You know, now I've got clean hands, maybe even put on a, a fresh pair so that handling everything I you know I could make sure I didn't get it anywhere but like I said it's the first time I've done it it's a learning process and those mental spirits are just about dried oh yeah I can literally see the wood clearing up or not clearing up, but drying up. And I'm just gonna go back in here now. And all I'm hitting this with is, I said a little Memwax that I already had. Laying around. is just to seal that wood up. It's all on the inside, so you can't see it. It's I got a little bit on the edge, but I wipe that right off. Again, I got some excess inside here, so we'll clean that up. 
And this already soaked into the wood real good, so I'm just going to wipe off any excess. And with that, this should be good. All right, folks, I'm going to put this back together. I'm going to get back to the range and try it out and see what happens. And, and this is... It's been a fun little project, and unfortunately, it's not done yet, but it's getting pretty close, and I'm going to let this sit overnight before I put everything back together, I do believe. Let that men wax dry up real well. But anyway, just sharing where I'm at, and um, I'll say it's been a fun project. It's just... This is turning out real well. Um, and as far as from a personal improvement standpoint, I've enjoyed it and that's been great, but I'm bad about putting things off. Um, I'm a procrastinator. I mean, that's bottom line. Well, deer season's sometime off. I mean, this is middle of June right now. So, you know, I've got a long ways for deer season. You know, I'm not in any rush for it, but I'm doing this now. So, you know, come closer to deer season, I'm not fooling with my gun. It's, it's set up and ready. Um, I'm actually being proactive here, not waiting to the last minute. So from a personal improvement standpoint, for me, that's a plus. Um, and also, I'll, I'll get into some other stuff on hunting later on, but, uh, and this is kind of tough too. Um, hunting, you can spend a lot of money and you gotta balance that with everything else you got going in your life. And, you know, if, if it's a sport. It can provide food. Um, you can do it inexpensively. I've done it. And, you know, not so much now. You know, I've you know, got a few dollars sitting on this table here. But um, it's something you got to balance, you know, between your personal finances and, you know, are, are you spending your money in the right places? Anyway, I'll get into that later on. That's but that's a a pretty big topic, and um, it's an important one because I know in in my past I spent a lot of money in a lot of places I shouldn't had having fun and doing things I enjoyed. But looking back, you know, I, I wish I'd really scaled back on what I spent, put that money in the right in the right places. Um, Right now, I'm debt free. So, you know, I can justify spending a few dollars on things I enjoy. I, you know, I've saved for a long time to get here. But if I'd been saving when I was 20 and not spending money on like, you know, bass boats and things, I would have got to where I'm at a whole lot sooner and be able to been a lot better shape financially. But anyway, like I said, that's a whole different complicated thing. But like I said, right now though, this is this is coming along pretty good. Um, get this sealed up, get it put back together, get back to the range and um, get a few technical issues figured out on the filming. And hopefully I'll be able to show you all some pretty good groups out of this. Until next time.